Once upon a time, in a far-off kingdom, there lived a king called Janus. He was known for having achieved a lot from a young age. During the day, he held court with his ministers. But this bored the young king. The outdoor life amused him extremely. And so in the evenings, he would go out disguised, searching around for any adventures to engage himself in. One day, as he was roaming around, he saw four girls sitting and talking. Mmm, mmm, mmm. These sweets taste amazing. Can't be anything that tastes better. Well, I think there is. I think the taste of meat is the best. That can't be. I think milk tastes the best. Milk? What a baby. Nothing can taste sweeter than love. Hmm. What do you think, Darla? I think the taste of wit is the sweetest of all. Just then, the girls' fathers came and took them home. The king waited and watched until he knew where the four girls lived. He then went to each of their doors and marked them with a chalk. The next day, he called for his minister. Bring me the owners of the marked houses near the kingdom gardens. I must speak with them. The minister went and easily found the four houses. He soon brought the owners to the king. Welcome! Do the four of you have daughters? Um, yes, your highness. Then, would you be kind to bring them here? The fathers looked at each other a bit worried. Your highness, with all due respect, it wouldn't be proper to send young unmarried girls to the palace. Don't worry, rest assured that your daughters will be well taken care of. The king sent a carriage with closed curtains so that no one would know about the young girls entering the palace, which pleased their fathers more. The four young maidens were kept in a room and were called one by one. Hello! Good day, your highness. Why did you call for me? Well, I heard you talking to your friends yesterday evening. What were you talking about? Oh, nothing ill about you, my king. <laughs> I know that. Don't be scared. You said something about meat. Oh, I only said that the taste of meat is the best. Uh, pardon me, your highness, but this girl belongs to a family that doesn't even eat meat. They're vegetarians. What? Then how can you say the taste of meat is the best when you haven't even tasted it? Well, it's true. My family doesn't eat meat. But I've seen when meat is bought, it's used completely and none is wasted. Even the bone is chewed clean by the dogs. After that, the crows use it, which is later consumed by the ants. King Janus was impressed by the young girl's answer. It's true what you say. Meat has an extremely delicious taste. Here is a reward for your answer. And so the girl went back happily. The second girl was called for, and she came in slowly and timidly. Hello, young one. Hello, your highness. Why have I been called? Yesterday evening, when with your friends, you said the taste of milk is the best. What did you mean? Oh, sire, people gorge on things made of milk, like butter and creams and sweets too. Very few can turn away from it. Its taste is indeed the best, even though I've never tasted it. What? Well... You see, 
I'm allergic to milk products, so I'm just basing this off what I've noticed. The king was very surprised. <laughs> I did not see that coming. But yes, milk and all the things made from it really do taste amazing. The king was happy with her reply and sent her off with a present. The third girl was called into the room and she came happily in. Hello, your highness. Hello. I have summoned you here to know about your chat with your friends yesterday evening. But your highness, I didn't say anything mean about you. Well, I didn't think you would. I only meant I heard you talking about the taste love. Oh, that. Well, yes, I did say that the taste of love is the sweetest. But I find that rather funny. How can you say that? Well, my parents always find happiness in each other's love. Once I even saw a mother deer nuzzling her fawn. That's when I thought love must really be very sweet to taste. What a beautiful answer. You're absolutely right. Love indeed has a very sweet taste. The king gave her a present and she went away quite pleased. Finally, it was Darla's turn. Greetings, your highness. You called for me? Greetings to you too. I called because I wanted to know what you spoke with your friends yesterday evening. It was nothing ill about you, I can assure you of that. I already know that. But I wanted to know what you meant when you said, the taste of wit is the best. Don't you know? <laughs> the taste of wit is exquisite especially when tasted around a person who lies. Well, then no one would feel that taste from a conversation with me. I never tell lies. <laughs> Is that so? I think even a person who has never lied can definitely do so one day. Are you challenging me, your king, that I will one day tell a lie? Your Highness, Give me 400 gold coins and six months, and I'll prove that you will. The king was very intrigued, gave her what she wanted, and waited patiently for the next six months. After they were over, the king called Darla to his palace. Do you remember your promise from six months ago? I do. Please come to my house and I will show you something very amazing. The king was curious and went to Darla's home with his ministers. With the money, Darla had built a huge, beautiful house. Your Majesty, there is a special room in this house where a person only of a kind heart can see a fairy. Why don't you go in and see? King Janus was very shocked. He wanted to go in but was a bit hesitant. Oh, um, well, why don't my ministers go in first? I'm sure they would love to see a fairy. The ministers agreed, and the first one went into the room. Wow, I'm going to see a fairy? This is so amazing. But as time went on, no one appeared to the minister and he soon started to worry. How can I go out and tell them I didn't see the fairy? They'll think me to be some wicked soul. So when the minister came out of the room, he lied to everyone there. Well, did you see the fairy? Oh, I did, but I was too nervous to speak. <laughs> Well, now it's my turn. And so the second minister went in. Everyone knows me to be the kindest there is. I will surely see the fairy. But again, as the minutes ticked away, no one appeared to the unhappy minister. When he left the room, 
Both the king and the first minister ambushed him. Well, did you see the fairy too? What did you um think of her? Oh, oh yes, it was an interesting encounter. Now the king was very confident about seeing the fairy. He went into the room and waited there patiently. I am a very kind king to my subjects. Surely I'll be able to see the fairy. He looked around eagerly, waiting to lay his eyes on the magical being. But as no fairy appeared, he started to feel uneasy. I doubt it's been long, or what if I'm not a kind king? No one can know about this. Darla was waiting eagerly for the king, and she was ecstatic when she saw him come out. Well, did you see the fairy? Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I did. It was really an amazing feeling being able to talk to a fairy. So you actually saw her? Yeah, and spoke to her too. Really? Uh, yeah, really? <sighs> My king, you lied just now, didn't you? Huh? What do you mean? I didn't lie. And that's when he remembered Darla's challenge that he would one day lie. The king burst out laughing and confessed that he hadn't seen a fairy. The two ministers were shocked, but also confessed the same. The king smiled at Darla. You are one smart person to have played such a trick on me. It's human instinct to lie when in trouble or when put in an uncomfortable situation. But that doesn't mean you should. I know. I won't lie ever again, Darla. I would love it if you would be my wife and help me run my kingdom. She gladly accepted his proposal. She too had fallen in love with the jolly King Janus, and the two were soon married. After that, the king realized that the taste of wit would always overpower any lie in its way. He made a very wise decision to never lie ever again. After all, a lie, no matter how big or small, should never be told. <laughs>